What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode in this Fantasy League and NBA 2K19, and I do have good news for you. Uh, Xbox Game Pass finally added NBA 2K20 to their catalog, which means I will be doing a series in there uh, on that game once I do finish this one. Now, it could be good news for some people, bad news for other for other people, uh, much like my man Shepard, who unfortunately doesn't particularly care for this series. I understand why, because it's cringe to extreme levels, and it's by far the sport among the ones that I like that I know the least about. So I understand that it's going to be pretty cringe. It's going to piss a lot of people off, but uh, I'm going to try to do it because I do really like the sport, and I do, uh, for some reason, enjoy playing 2K despite it being a shit game. Anyway, so we're going to be taking on the Detroit Pistons, and... You know, when it comes to big men, they're actually pretty solid. They have Pascal, Pascal Siakam, and they have Rudy Gobert. So that's a good. Uh, those are two big men, and probably I would say the best combination of big men in this in this league right now. I don't really think there's going to be too many teams that are going to have a better power forward center combo. So they're going to be pretty dangerous. But the rest of the team, I think we could beat. Meanwhile, we get offered Nurkic. Um, that's not bad, but we already have Javale, who is a better fit for my personal style of play in 2K. Mark Gasol, not a good offer in my opinion, so we're going to go ahead and stick with Middleton for this one. Then we get offered Bazemore, and Buddy Heald is actually a really good player. I like using him a lot, so uh, there's no way in hell I'm accepting that shit trade. Of course, scouting, we're going to go ahead and, and have it automated. Nobody cares about scouting, especially because it's only going to be a one-season uh, series. Okay, so this is an offer that I have to kind of take into consideration because I know Chris Paul's contract is massive, so... If we were go looking at you know the long haul, so for multiple seasons, this is a trade I would just immediately decline. However, because we're looking to win the title in one season, I feel like this could actually be a solid trade. Now, Chris Paul, you know he's a bit he's a bit old now. He's what in his he's what thirty something? Does it say there? It doesn't. He's probably like thirty two or thirty three at least. Um, but at the same time, he's an eighty seven overall. We can play Kemba Walker as a shooting guard, I think. Uh, and we can also, I don't know, move some stuff around. Maybe have Buddy Heald to being an undersized small forward. He's going to get destroyed, but for the time being, we could do that. Or we can maybe have Danny Green play as a starter and Buddy, Buddy Heald being kind of like a Lou Williams type of thing where he comes off the bench and he scores a shit ton of points. So this is what we're going to be going with with the first game. Chris Paul, Kemba Walker, Buddy Heald, Marcus Morris, and Javel Meager are going to be the starters. Off coming off the bench, Danny Green, Beverly, the dead man, Deadman, and Bertans, as I like to call him, even though it's not Bertans, but it is what it is. Theus, and then of course Corver, who won't be playing. So it's gonna, it's a bit of a risk having such a small guy as our small forward, but like I said, we can still change some things. And worst comes to worst, we'll put Danny Green up there and, and see what happens. Maybe have Buddy Hill as a as a good score coming off the bench. Immediately Kemba Walker playing in the new shooting guard position that he's I don't know if he's played that too much in real life. I didn't really watch him at all. When he played for Charlotte, seen him a little bit when he comes when he comes to the Celtics, um, but I'm sure somebody like him who can score pretty much everywhere, he shouldn't have too many issues. The only thing that we're gonna have a problem with is size, but I don't think that's I don't think in the long haul if we make the right adjustments and who knows maybe even make some make some trades if we have to. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Meanwhile, Siakam is showing off his range. Kemba Walker for three, he scores that one, so he's already up to five points. Kemba once again feeds to JaVale and he slams it down. I don't know why that's not an Unleash the Chaos moment because I would say it's not too bad. He literally posterized Gobert who's arguably the best defender in the league. So interesting there. Bertans goes inside and he lays it in. I'm going to try to be a little bit less cringe. You know, say a bunch less bullshit. And one thing to take into consideration is I'm not going to be putting in free throws anymore because they add a lot of time to it. Um, and I'll only be showing like clutch free throw so if we're like in the fourth quarter only a couple minutes left and it's and we desperately need points then uh or you know that's a good way to close it out or something like that then i will put them in there but if it's just free throws throughout the game i won't so if you see like randomly two or three points being added or something like that then just know that it's because of our free throws <laughs> meanwhile theus just goes after the guy and posterizes him dead man with a block we'll be seeing that pretty often this season i feel like dead man again with a block The Pistons are doing pretty good inside. There's no doubt about that. I mean, yes, we blocked them a few times, but overall, they're kind of just dominating us there. Deadman and one. See if he can take advantage of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't. That's a three from Siakam. He misses, but Mejri gets the offensive rebound, and Deadman gets another block. That's, what, three already? Heald finds the dead one. He gets blocked by fucking Mejri. Buddy Heald goes in, and he lays it in. All right, Chris Paul. Buddy Heald shoots. Okay, it's only mid-range. 
but so far not too bad you know I think so one of the issues we've been having is that I, I because I rely so much on playing inside I tend to make some really dumb decisions as you can see you know we have 53% but we're somehow down by uh, by four points doesn't really make a lot of sense but it's because you see they're shooting a lot of threes and they're scoring quite a few of them so having a hard time like that and that's kind of an issue for me is because of course against two bigs that are this good I should be trying to exploit you know Kemba Walker and Chris Paul a bit more but for some reason I tend to go in the paint as much as possible and as you can see now that Kemba Walker is taking a lot of threes we're right back in the game but inside if we don't get a block with dead man then we're in deep shit meanwhile very very bad defending from me Henson <laughs> Henson of all people gets an easy bucket Harkless scores Terrence Ross the bane of my existence I thought it was an N1 I was gonna be fucking pissed if that was a four-point play luckily it was a loose ball foul meanwhile Kemba finds Theus who shoots the three with the green release I need to exploit that a lot more too is I have a lot of a lot of bigs that can that can score threes too so you know Bertans Theus these are all guys that can score and I need to I need to exploit them a little bit more depending I need to be a lot more intelligent when it comes to exploiting specific matchups Danny Green for three keeps us within four Chris Paul we need to go on a roll right now he scores see Chris Paul he doesn't have a lot of points that's only that's only his first bucket of the game but if I can get used to using him and most importantly get used to his release because I've never really liked his release in 2k but if I can get used to it I feel like he can definitely be a dominant force for us meanwhile Terrence Ross takes a step back and he drains it Terrence Ross has been lighting us up I think see look at this like my defense is shit but actually it's not too bad because if you look at it like a lot of times and I, I especially in the last video I'll get a block but the ball will every single time just magically go into the opponent's hand every single time so I get a lot of blocks and we just can't really we can't take advantage anyway we were close but we ended up blowing it a tough loss I mean to be fair this was a good Pistons team and they were they were specifically good in the in the in the positions I'm good at so I wasn't able to exploit JaVale's athleticism and size, and yeah, it just didn't go well at all. Ubre went off, which isn't surprising, considering of course we have Buddy. He we had Buddy Heald starting as a uh, as a small forward, so he had a pretty big size mismatch. But my, but uh, Kemba Walker went off as a shooting guard. Like I was saying, I feel like with his ability to score from pretty much everywhere, he's gonna be our best player and if we can start getting Chris Paul to score more too then I think we're gonna be pretty pretty set so this is what we're gonna go with with the second game of this video Chris Paul Kimba Walker Danny Green's gonna be a starting small forward because he is a good defender whereas Buddy Heald can't defend the brioche Marcus Morris and JaVale McGee are still gonna be the starters and Buddy Heald's gonna be getting a lot of minutes coming off the bench um yeah I feel like what we need to do is get better at scoring off the bench if we can do that then we should be fine this team isn't this team isn't great in my opinion you know they have Ben Simmons sure but Everybody else is kind of, you know, mediocre here. Harrison Barnes, I mean, John Collins is going to be good in the future, but right now I don't really think he's going to be too much of a threat in this game. So I'm not too worried about that. JaVale loses the tip off. But we'll see what if Chris Paul can defend Ben Simmons. Technically, you wouldn't think so, but the good thing about 2K is that if you, you know, if you're not, like, against a LeBron or somebody like that, playing inside is pretty difficult unless you're... Like I said, a LeBron kind of player, or you're a big guy. So, generally, I think we will be able to defend Ben Simmons no problem. He can't really shoot, so it makes defending him a lot easier. Of course, he's just so much bigger, he can get passes off no problem at all. Chris Paul cuts in, and he's he's a lot more aggressive in this game right here. You'll be seeing that a lot. He's a lot more aggressive here. I just feel like it was a, it was a good matchup. I mean, yes, Ben Simmons is big, but he's not, I don't know, he's not as quick as Chris Paul, so it makes things... At least not in the game. So it makes things e e a lot easier. Deadman with another block. He's been getting a lot of those all season. Kemba Walker also gets a block, and that's a shot clock violation. We're still we're down, yes, but we're playing pretty good defense, and that's probably the most important thing, especially because this team is mostly built for defense when it comes to the second unit. Deadman with another and one. Very, very important to have him getting those. And, of course, he did convert, as you can see on the scoreboard. He, get, he did convert on the free throw. Next time, I'll, I will actually put in free throws for N1, so I'll, I'll make sure I do that in the next one. Theus, as he likes to do, goes straight in the paint, and he lays it in. Not an easy shot at all. Can he guard Lyles? Oh, he does. Or whoever, whatever that guy's name is. Lyles, yeah. Lyles is going off. I've been making fun of him. Meanwhile, he's 
Look at this shit, man. It's the three buckets in a row. Anyway, Wiggins on Campbell Walker. A, a, definitely, a definite mismatch in terms of size. And he hits it off the backboard. But Kemba Walker goes straight at him. And he, he is able to hit a very difficult shot. So Kemba's definitely proven me right that he can play in that position. There you go, Chris Paul with six points already. That's what, four points? Four more points than he had in the entire game. Uh, his, an entire, his entire Timberwolves debut. Meanwhile, look at this, man. Like We keep on getting having good plays defensively, but they keep on getting offensive rebounds. Um, we're down by six. No, we're sorry. We're down by... We're down... What the fuck, man? I can't even do math. That's three plus, plus six. Oof, that's nine. Yeah, w holy shit, I just blew that. Yeah, we're down by nine. <laughs> My brain is mush. Too much torture, God. Danny Green has to unleash chaos. How's that not chaos? How is that not chaos unleashed? I don't know. Anyway, Danny Green, I guess, surprising us with that kind of a bucket, but it is what it is. Kemba Walker, mid-range. He's money too. So Chris Paul and Kemba Walker have been scoring a bunch. Danny Green, he's definitely starting to heat up. That's going to be important in this entire series, especially with him being a starter. We need him to be getting a lot more points. And Buddy Heald will definitely be able to do well coming off the bench. JaVale with a mid-ranger. Not a bad shot at all. Danny Green for three. That's a big one. Ties up the game. We actually took the lead for your three, uh, via free throws. Now Danny Green goes straight up Ben Simmons, and he's able to lay it in. This is a huge third quarter for Danny Green. Walker on Wiggins, but JaVale gets the block. And on the fast break, Heald finds Walker, who finds JaVale, and he fucking slams it in. I mean, uh, that, I don't know if that's necessarily like replay worthy, but then we got Bertons getting tortured on an alley-oop. Look at that. I mean, to be expected with Jared Allen. And another really, really, really important shot there from Wiggins, who's having a surprisingly good game. And that's goaltending from Danny Green. I was hoping for a block, but unfortunately, weren't able to get it. But Marcus Morris hitting a pretty tough shot. He's he's definitely had a lot better of a game than he had in uh, in the previous matchup. Jared Allen hits a foul. Kemba Walker gets a huge block on Wiggins. Walker goes inside. He's really attacking Wiggins right now, both defensively and offensively. Trying to show that he, he's uh he's outmatching him, pretty big time actually if you think about it you know but on both sides of the court. Danny Green with a very clutch steal. We have the potential of going up by six now. Danny Green makes the first and he makes the second. The good thing about our starting lineup is that we have three very 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 clutch free throw shooters, uh in Chris Paul, Kemba Walker, and Danny Green. Harrison Barnes shoots that shit and he scores. Should have guarded him a lot better. Um, only up by three with six seconds left. Unfortunately for Ben Simmons, he has no choice but to foul Chris Paul. And Chris Paul, we all know he's lethal from the free throw line. So we're back up by five. My brain's at least able to count five. Ten's too much to ask for. But Ben Simmons, you know, Collins throws it up there. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't drop. And we are officially three and two. Not a great record, but but at the same time, it's a. I think that chemistry actually does somehow affect teams in 2K. I don't know if it really affects the computer. But I know it. I know it does affect how people play um, when it comes to user-controlled teams. But regardless, I feel like playing Danny Green as a small forward really uh, helped out quite a bit. There, we were able to have not so much of a disadvantage um, among our starters. So if we if we can keep that up, then he should be fine. Of course, it's going to be really hard for him to guard guys like LeBron, etc. Uh, but you know, we can only hope for the best. And worst comes to worst, we can find we can find a trade that'll. That'll work for everybody. JaVale had a really good game defensively with two blocks. Deadman had two blocks as well. So we have a very, very good defensive team. Offensively, of course, you know, Buddy Hill didn't get any points, which is disappointing for him and Bertons as well. But still, uh, all around, I would say solid performance considering uh, we're still getting used to having uh, a smaller team and having um, Kemba Walker and Chris Paul work together as a unit. So we're right now 3-2. and two. Uh, Puts us fourth in the conference. Now, I don't know... How many teams have actually played the same amount of games as us? But regardless, we're still right there. And remember, it is going to be a 29-game season, at least for regular season. Hopefully, we we'll go to the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see what we can do going forward. I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think of the trade. Was it completely retarded, or was it something that could event that could potentially pay off? towards the playoffs so let me know in the comments what you think about that if you enjoyed the video please smash the like button subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and one more thing let me know in the comment section down below if this was a slightly less cringe video and i'll see you in the next episode guys thanks for watching